Are you sure? Here's the 30 second lesson on what legends know. Never ask a bride why she's getting married. Don't wear a skirt on a windy day. Deodorant is not a shower. Don't sniff chili flakes. <laughs> and don't forget, saving is not investing. Legends don't just save, they invest in mutual funds. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully. The aftermath of the Canada-India spat continues. Now Canada's allies, particularly the Five Eyes allies, have spoken out generally with boilerplate statements saying that the allegations the Canadians have made are serious and they should be investigated, etc., etc., etc. However, what the Canadians have done is that they've named names. First of all, they've named Indian diplomats who they've asked to leave their country and they've been tit-for-tat expulsions. At the same time, they've brought in the name of a man called Lawrence Bishnoi. Now, Lawrence Bishnoi, this must be something, this must be something he's been waiting to put on his CV for a very long time. He's just 31. He runs a very successful gang, quote-unquote successful gang of more than 700 people specializes in hiring cheap shooters. It's a, it's a new phenomenon in Indian underworld that you see these gangsters rising from Punjab, some from Haryana, but mostly from Punjab, and, and then hiring shooters from the poorer parts of India, that is UP, Bihar, etc., and use them as expendable gun fodder. So, Canadian government, RCMP, Royal Canadian Mounted, Mounted Police, has named Lawrence Bishnoi to say that it is his gang through which they allege that Indian diplomats have been working. And how have they been working? They've been recruiting shooters through these gangs or maybe setting one gang upon another. So we'll talk about that in today's episode of Kartar Kartar. However, this whole thing is so cluttered and so complex then you can't look at one thing in isolation of 55 others. Now, we can't talk about 56 things at this time, but I have to mention a few to set the perspective. And once I have done so, I will have Bismi Taskin, our reporter, join in with me. She's been covering these stories. In fact, we'll share a bunch of stories with you as links with the description of this, of this episode, where she's covered these gangs and these gang wars very closely over the past three or four years since this came to a head. Now, you, if you want to see the big picture issues. So the big picture issue, if you want me to start somewhere, I will start with 23rd of June, 1985. Now, I'm very surprised and astounded, not just with Canadian government that you would expect. They are also usual suspects in this matter because they are complicit in so many ways with, with this Canadian media. But you know what? A lot of the people think that there was no history before Google, but there was history before Google. Everything that's happened today started at some other point of time. So I'm taking you back to 23rd June 1985 and it, and it becomes doubly relevant because it coincides, what I'm going to mention coincides also with this Canada-India dust up over what is generally seen as the Sikh radical issue or Sikh radical slash gangland issue or Sikh radical nexus with gang warfare issue in which the Canadians think Indian diplomats are involved, in which India thinks Canada is guilty of looking the other way or allowing these groups to prosper in Canada. Nevertheless, why do we talk about 23rd of June 1985? That was the day that AI-182, that is Air India's jumbo jet Kanishka was blown up by Sikh radical terrorists. Sikh radical terrorists put the bomb in it. Two inquiries have established it, although efforts are always ongoing to somehow create a revisionist narrative on this. Even now, one of these Sikh legislators in Canada has demanded a third inquiry, alleging that maybe Indian agents had bombed their own plane. That said, nobody in the world has any doubts. Canadian government has not had any doubts. It's just that they failed to punish anybody for this or call anybody to account. That is where the biggest failure on the Canadian side lies. And that's why a lot of the others of the same persuasion have found it convenient and have felt safe going and pitching camp in, camp in Canada 
and operating from there. That's where the Indian, Indian grievance also comes from. I'm not saying that the Indian grievance would then justify India to use, if it has, or allegedly use its diplomatic missions to then start fishing in that pond. That's the metaphor we had, we had used yesterday. The question, however, is who, who dug the pond, who filled it with water, and who invited the fish, for, fish to it. That, what, that is something that we talked about yesterday. So we are not going there. So the reason we talk about 1985 is that, one, this dust-up has taken place because India has been chafing for a very long time that these groups are prospering in Canada. Over the last three, four years, these groups have become active in India as well, particularly in Punjab. There have been several hits carried out. They have no popular support, but there have been several hits carried out. The odd Hindu priest has been killed. The odd follower of a Dera. And Deras, who owe allegiance to these Babas, Gurmeet Ram Rahim, for example, they are seen, they are seen as apostates or challengers to the Sikh tradition by conservative Sikhs. And it's a popular thing for the separatists to go kill them. So some, some of those hits have been carried out and those have been traced back, according to Indian agencies, to Canada. However, in the middle of all this, something happened this, this week. Something happened this Tuesday. What happened? Ten Indian aircraft, civilian aircraft, received common hoax messages. Now, by now, I think the number is 12. Common hoax messages from one Twitter handle which soon disappeared or, was, or was, it, was it taken down saying there was a bomb on board. As I am recording this, I also notice that two persons have been detained allegedly for these hoax calls. However, they have not been arrested. So we don't know how this will play out. However, this is much too much of a coincidence for us not to take note of. Now, I am surprised even now I'm seeing a lot of discussions on the media, but how come nobody has drawn at least a date reference? And that convinces me that people really think that there was no history before Google. Now, if this has come just a day after the Canada-India dust-up, the statements from the two sides, expulsion of diplomats, just a day after that, it also happens to be 15th of October. Why is 15th of October so significant? Because 15th of October 1992, once again we have to go back to pre-Google times. 15th October 1992, Punjab police in an encounter in Ludhiana killed Talvinder Singh Parmar. Talvinder Singh Parmar then was the top leader of Babar Khalsa, the organization called Babar Khalsa International. He was the prime mover, prime mover, the prime plotter of the Kanishka bombing. So yesterday, it was the 32nd anniversary of his killing by Punjab police, killed along with him were a bunch of other terrorists with him and also two Pakistanis, two proven Pakistanis. Now the story about him is a bit complex as many of these are because he had stayed safe in Canada. He had not been charged properly. He was quite safe. He had traveled to UK from Canada. At some point, I think Canada also said that they're trying to get him back, but Britain won't extradite him. Then he landed up in Pakistan. Then it looks like there are two stories. One story is that RCMP, Royal Canadian Mounted Police, alerted the Indian side that he was coming into India, but they laid the condition that they are letting the Indian police know that he was coming in, but they insisted on a promise that Indian police will not kill him. And it's folklore. And it's somehow believed that RCMP has carried the sense of hurt that Punjab police did not keep that promise. However, I don't take this so seriously. I am more inclined because I, because I also covered all these stories at that time on a granular basis in Punjab because 91 to 92, in fact, 1990 to 92 was the worst period of terror in Punjab. That's when in one calendar year, 15,000 people were killed. 15,000. That was the worst year, worst year of killings for any, any period of violence or insurgency in India's history ever. 
15,000 were killed. It was in that period I was covering this very closely. So the story I'd like to believe is that he was in Pakistan and he was lured by Indian intelligence. That's when, that's when KPS Gill, Ajit Doval, people like them were working closely together. He was lured from Pakistan into coming to India saying, you have a good gang here, you can do things, you can shore up the morale of your people and then go back safely. So once he was brought in, he was then caught in a bank robbery in Ludhiana and that's where he was put away. Nevertheless, all these hoax messages came on, on the day which happened to be the death anniversary or the killing anniversary of Talvinder Singh Parmar. Very safe in Canada. Canadians actually never prosecuted anybody properly for the Kanishka bombing. Although, mind you, very vast majority of those killed were actually Canadian citizens. It just, it's, it just so happens that most of them, almost all of them, were of Indian extraction. I'm not sure, and I'm not the only one who's cynical. There are many in Canada who are also equally cynical, who think that if these were actually Canadian Canadians, maybe Canada, RCMP would have taken this more seriously than they did. And that's a, that's a cause for hurt in India. And that's the message that Sikh radicals were also trying to send yesterday. That is what I'd like to believe. Because you know what? You might say, oh, this may be a coincidence that all these hoax messages came on this day. But you know, remember the line from that James Bond movie, Goldfinger, once in happenstance, twice is coincidence. Three times is enemy action. This is 12 times, right? There are no coincidences in this business. So what this is telling us is that this radical business is now coming back. It is not there in Punjab, mercifully. It's not there in Punjab almost at all. What's happened is that even the odd person, odd force that's come up in Punjab has come on the police radar and they over the past few years have found it convenient to escape from India to Canada. Now, I know that Indian authorities also have to answer for this, that how did people like this jump past Indian immigration, right? All of us have to give our fingerprints now and, and, and what is called as the eye test or iris test, etc. Maybe a lot of this was not there in 2016-17. It was during those periods that many of these people escaped and they found it convenient to go to Canada where they found asylum. Now in Punjab, we know one political party in particular, which gives you a letter for a fee. They give you a letter on their letterhead with the, on a, on, for a fee saying that you have threat from the police in India. You, you are an endangered person and you should be given asylum. I think the going rate when I last checked was 80,000. The gentleman has also given interviews to publications saying that, look, I have to run my party. Why should I not do it? If I remember correctly, there was one on the print as well, which we'll share with you. So Canada has become the recipient of these. So the second point is that as the Canadian government and RCMP themselves said that these gangs exist in Canada because only when gangs exist, there can be gang warfare. They only accuse India then of, ex of exploiting these gang rivalries by aligning with one gang. That is the Lawrence Bishnoi gang and Lawrence Bishnoi is now in Sabarmati jail. He's been in seven jails over the past 10 years including maybe a month, a period of a month when he escaped from custody while being taken to, while being taken to a court. About that, we'll talk in a little bit of detail when Bismi Taskin joins us. So, gangs ex exist. Gangs are fighting with each other. India is accused of exploiting this gang warfare. There is no allegation that India has brought these gangs or gangsters or criminals or shooters from India. All of them have come on Canadian visas, many of them have come on fake passports and then they've been able to run the process in Canada in such a way and the process has been very friendly that their visas, asylum, citizenship has all been fast forwarded. Those are questions that Canadians have to raise with themselves. I think, the, I think these will feature in the Canadian election campaign also. Actually, it started in 1975 when a man called Bupinder Bhupinder Johal, alias Bindi, you know, in Punjab, everybody has a nickname, as in Bengal, as in most parts of India. Bhupinder Johal Bindi, he went to Canada 
with his mother and there he joined the gang of already existing gang of Ron and Jimmy Dosanjh they were running the organization called International Sikh Youth Federation that organization still exists and from all the data we see in India even then that was supported by pakistani agents now we have had in this inquiry that's going on on foreign interference in canada canadian ministers senior people also saying that pakistani intelligence has also been playing with indian sikh radical slash khalistanis in canada even now but in 1975 also this was going on this is when it started the next point the key figure now lawrence bishnoi who's been named by canadians officially he probably is the first indian gangster named as a person of interest by a foreign country by a big foreign country by a g7 country in this case right pakistanis may have named a dozen people in india that doesn't matter in this case canadians have named him as a key figure that has really that has really raised his stature to 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 being like an international terrorist however he is in jail canadians have also said to washington post the washington post is claiming this that this is being run by the putative number 2 in the indian cabinet that's a very serious uh, that that's raising it to a very serious level and that's also raising lawrence bishnoi's stature to some other level that is just a few days after he and his people have allegedly or suspected to have carried out the assassination of baba siddiqui who is a very powerful politician in a coalition led by the bjp so somehow in this business in fact in most of this business 2 and 2 does not make 4 in this case it looks even more confusing than that and finally how do these gangs in canada then survive because they lead expensive lives if we see their homes they are big homes even home where one of them sukha duneke or sukhdul singh was assassinated is a very sizable very big home this the indian agencies suspect is is mainly done through drug running drug smuggling most of which is done in india or through extortion almost all of which is done in india having said all of this now that we have set the perspective we will have bismi join in with me bismi taskin this is your first appearance on cut the clutter i will tell you something that if any gangster has done something in india and bismi taskin has not been on that story then whatever the gangster did wasn't worthwhile from the gangster's point of view because she's followed the gangster story very closely and that's why she's here now before i go to her i will also tell you the fact that these forces started growing in canada from the 1970s mid 1970s with the help of the isi the pakistani intelligence has also been stated by ujjal dosanj a former canadian minister and also a senior politician in an interview to us of which i will share a link with you with the description that said bismi tell us about lawrence bishnoi where is he from when was his first brush with law what are the high profile cases against him and from where does he acquire such fame right um so he was born in fazilka district of punjab in 1993 to a farmer there uh, his first brush with the law however started when he was in punjab university he never completed my the university degree. but but a long time after i left it right so student politics he had this first brush with the law there in punjab university elections uh, that was in 2011 2012 that you know that all of these things started happening now this is where he started making friendships lasting friendships with people like sampath nehra and then there's uh, goldi brar he met goldi brar drop these names who sampath nehra sampath nehra is somebody that's a haryanvi name yes sampath nehra is his oldest friend and ally of the bishnoi nehra goldi brar alliance the rest of the friendships so, so the gang is a three uh, th- three founder gang lawrence bishnoi goldi brar and sampat sampat nehra right um so it the bishnoi gang started off being called as bishnoi gang but 
while he you know carried on with his criminal activities he, vishnu is a master negotiator so he started getting allies from all over northern in, uh, northern india from punjab ah, to haryana and you an offer you can't refuse yeah, yeah? sort yeah. of yes real yes. mafia style yes yes huh. yes so um, going back to his time in punjab university he had gone in to pursue law there he met some patnera they became best buddies but that was 36 years after i passed out of that university Huh. Right now, um, Sampar Nehra was in a different college, but they would meet to play, uh, you know, kabaddi, uh, basketball, and all, volleyball and other sports. Now, um, um, Bishnoi was first arrested um, in 2014, and this is when he met his godfather Jaswinder Singh alias Rocky, a failed poli uh, politi uh, political aspirant who is in, a gangster in the jail. uh he he met him while he, he was there because he is also from fazilika yeah. so rocky would keep his eyes out for young blood the same thing as bishnoi does now at that time there was no social media to keep yeah, eyes a, out that's just called talent search talent yeah. search right yeah. um so then he is known as his godfather so bishnoi's grooming happened during his time in bharatpur jail Like you have mentioned earlier, he has spent time. Bharatpur you know, in Rajasthan. Right. Then he has also <coughs> spent time in Bhatinda Jail, uh, Tihar. Um, then there is Mandoli. Then Sabarmati now. Then he has also spent brief periods of time in uh, Ajmer, Jaipur, Ajmer, Ajmer, Jaipur, and all of these. Yes. Seven, jails. seven prisons in all. Yes, yes. Uh, at least seven because he was yes, taken sir. into custody one for one or two days by other police. Now he cannot be shifted out from Sabarmati uh, due to the Ministry of Home Affairs order. So it was during his time in Bharatpur Jail, which was also. flagged by farikot police and bhatinda police that you know he's run started running his gang from uh, bharatpur jail and then he was transferred in 2021 uh, the delhi police slapped him under uh, makoka after which he was kept in tihar makoka is the very tough anti terror law uh, right. makoka is maharashtra maharashtra huh. control of organized crime act yeah and many states use it makoka right right, right. so he was locked up in that's so what is the law or why the order to keep him in Sa sabarmati jail why can't he be moved because that's a question that will now be raised that he is in a gujarat jail mm -hmm. is it to prevent him from carrying out more bad activity or is it to enable him because he is still able to run his operations if at least he's got baba siddiqui assassinated right so sources in the police have said that he is a high security prisoner in fact at one point delhi the delhi prisons department did not want to keep him in delhi they said take him away from here he is a high risk prisoner because also at that time they raised issues because other gangs um, like tillu tajpuria uh, of a rival gang um, was murdered by another rival gang uh, jitender man gogi yes inside delhi uh, uh, delhi stihar all of these the high security wars so they said they wanted to brush their hands off bishnoi because so they were afraid of gang warfare inside the jail inside the jail but not like after that it did not happen big gangsters have been killed one gangster was a uh, one gangster was assassinated inside rohini court jitender yes. man gogi and and gogi uh, which gang was he from gogi ran his own gang again young blood like bishnoi he was from the bishnoi alliance but he was also a bishnoi competitor because they were looking for a replacement because people like neeraj bawana then the devinder bombiha were either killed or they were in uh, behind bars so bishnoi basically gained out of the death of gogi and and who killed gogi gogi was shot dead by tillu tajpuria gang members and which side was tillu tajpuria on i will so i will um, explain the alliances lawrence bishnoi rohit godara goldie brar sampat nehra kapil sangwan alias the nandu gang all of these and also jaggu bhagan puria who is also an accused in siddu musewala's murder is one alliance their arch rival that's that's like that size of alliance will have sounds like a huge multi party alliance in yeah. politics right yeah. right their arch rival is this lucky patial bambiha gang now there is more in this gang uh, adding to the confusion um, while devinder bambiha was killed in an encounter in 2016 bambiha gang by punjab been, police yes in an encounter uh, bambiha gang has been taken over by lucky patial who is believed to be in armenia 
then there is causal alliance in this, this truly multinational yes yes it's yes. international because uh, goldie bra yes. who's like the number 2 in the lawrence bishnoi gang is he's probably in canada he was definitely in canada till 2022 after siddu wallas uh, siddu muse wallas murder murder assassination yes right. and then he was seen in america yes and then lately he hasn't been seen yes, but yes. presumed to be in Ca- presumed to yes. be in canada yes that's right so then in this bambiha alliance there is also ashdeep singh ashdalla who is also believed to be a member of the khalistan tiger force Sukha Duneke was a friend and an ally. So you are dropping all these names, so we have to put these names in perspective. So all these names that she is dropping, right, uh, of quote unquote famous or infamous people, these they need some perspective. Arsh Arshdeep Singh or Arsh Dalla as he is known, right, in in the gangland. After a while, your real name is forgotten, right? Mm-hmm. It's 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 what it's it's what you are famous famous as that endures. So Arsh Dalla also lives in Canada. he is from according to indian agencies from the same group as hardeep singh nichar that is khalistan tiger force mm. as it is called that's one sukha dunuk duneke whose full name is sukhdul singh he was assassinated on 20th of september 2023 which is a few months after nichar nichar was 18th of june 2023 Sukhdul Singh alias Sukha Duneke again most be known as Sukha Duneke if you google Sukha Duneke you will find more entries in his name if you say Sukhdul Singh maybe 50 other Sukhdul Singhs will pop up Sukha Duneke was also killed and that time it was seen as a gangland killing in Canada so those are the names she is dropping and now RCMP also said they also brought in Sukha Sukhdul Singh or Sukha Duneke yes assassination also in their list of actions which they allege might have been inspired by agents engaged by allegedly engaged by indian diplomats right so coming back to sukha duneke the bishnoi gang actually claimed responsibility for this murder now since the time bishnoi has come to power especially uh, come to is, power means in the gangland in the gangland yeah. he came to power after the killing of anand pal from rajasthan and raju theet so tell us who was anand pal anand pal is this uh, notorious gangster who ruled the rajasthan haryana belt his rise or claim to fame has been the liquor business in it again now all of these ties also have uh, all of these also have ties to the murder of karni sena faction chief sukhdev singh that was, that was caught on CCTV. Yes, yeah. in Jaipur, in his own house. And that was claimed by Lawrence Bishnoi gang. Yes, Rohit Godhara, an extension, an ally of the Bishnoi gang. And what was the reason they killed him? So there are multiple things, but um, the one of the main reasons was a murder in two thousand and two, a very old murder. Then there was this liquor business, and the most important reason that they gave because Goga Medhi himself was a history sheeter. He had multiple right, cases, right? right? right. So it was bloodshed. It was pure revenge. It was also liquor. It was real estate. They wanted him out of that picture. Miss me, I've been reading your stories, and I can also see that one, these gangs are quite cruel as they would be in their business, but also they have a lot of loyalty rituals, like which is almost like straight from movies or or crime thrillers. And and you particularly mentioned one up about Ashdeep Singh and Ash Dalla and his group. He by the way faces 20 criminal cases in india including a beheading in delhi and this body apparently was found in some little tenement next to the balaswar balaswar garbage mountain which is one of the eyesores of delhi huge garbage mountain mm-hmm. so what ex- exactly happened in this case So the murder took place in December 2022 as per the special cell of Delhi police however it only came to light in January 2023 because next month next month yes after the neighbors noticed there's a particular stink coming from a room and because they had not disposed of the body properly even then in January only some seven eight parts of this particular man this drug addict uh, suppose a drug addict that you mentioned uh, body parts were recovered now two people were arrested um, and uh, they have been charged under the stringent sections of the unlawful activities prevention act nosha 56 year old and and jagjit who was um, 29 at that time now uh, as per sources in the special cell nosha was working for a pakistan based handler 
who was working for the lashkari taiba and jagjit was working for a handler was connecting him to ashdeep singh alias ashdalla now we have read stories we have seen news reports of you know how the pakistan um, how uh, islamic terror and uh, khalistan uh, islamic terror and sikh separatists often come down to create a law and order situation now this was a case where jagjit and noshad beheaded a man how they identified the man they don't know who the person is they met this person roaming around asking them for money to buy drugs in a park in balaswar delhi they identified that he is a target um, after they saw the tattoo of a trishul on his hand uh, on his hand and then they killed and beheaded him now they also recorded this particular video and jagjit sent it uh, to his handler to prove his allegiance to the uh sikh separatist uh to sikh separatism um so that the handler sends it to arshdalla and noshad sent it to his pakistan based handler yeah so so to to prove to you that we are worth your while we are carrying this out for you right so that was to prove to them that they could just kill somebody in cold blood for no reason yes scary so remember fazilka where lawrence bishnoi was born is sort of sort of bordering both haryana because more bishnois live in haryana than in punjab and more bishnois live in rajasthan so that borders both haryana and and rajasthan and that's why the gang also spreads uh, spread initially in these places then it got to mumbai and other places now why did they why did he kill if he did first of all what is the evidence that lawrence bishnoi gang had sidhu musewala killed and if so why did he put that hit on him so the Bish- lawrence bishnoi supposedly made a call to goldie brar in canada sitting in tihar four days after the murder of youth akali dal leader vicky midu khera vicky midu khera was killed in mohali right huh? and apparently by members of the bambiha gang yes by the way devinder bambiha who was killed in 2016 he is called bambiha because he hails from the village bambiha in generally the moga area of punjab isn't it yes uh, so he was killed in a police encounter but his gang endured after that so why was vicky midu khera killed we know that there was a bambiha gang we know that bambiha also got killed in 2016 other people took over his gang but who killed vicky midu khera and why why were lawrence bishnoi and his partner hassled about his killing there is a lot of brotherhood and rivalry among these gangs bloodshed remains perennial yeah, throughout there na there's honor among thieves yes yeah. yes so vicky medukera lawrence bishnoi addresses him as his brother bhai vicky medukera was accused by the of, by the bambiha gang of interfering in their day to day businesses putting um, spies or people to give information on their property deals on their um, other sorts of criminal activities so they got fed up with him and then they killed vicky medukera now after the murder of vicky medukera lawrence bishnoi supposedly made this call to brar and told him ki we need to get revenge at that time the uh, investigating team had also come out and realized that siddhu musewala's manager at that time had something to do with this particular murder he is he, uh, he allegedly was, allegedly he was also accused of providing logistical aid to the shooters at some point now sitting in tihar bishnoi started thinking about it in this in this meanwhile in 2020 um sidhu musewala had come out with this song with amrit man bambiha bole watch this see this still on your on, on your screen we can't share two lines on the song with you for copyright reason but i will share a link of the song it's bambiha bole now bambiha the reference supposedly at least that's a cover it's to a bird it's a small bird that is found commonly in rural punjab it also it, it also squawks however it is generally understood with me if i am correct that while he used the bird as a reference bambiha but this was also like like sung in the praise of the bambiha gang yes absolutely especially because um, there was a use of a gun there it it was strategized use in a particular many, matter many guns if you watch this song it's it's actually promotes gun culture vigilante justice so yes. you see this four rapists who the police can't prosecute they are they are made to they are given guns and made to shoot each other 
by this gangster right there is also a line saying that i have everybody in my pocket yes. sho ssp dc right so so this looks like sung in the praise of gangland rule right right and yes. and you think that bishnoi's people thought that he had sung that song in praise of the mabiha gang they already thought about getting him out of the way but bishnoi sitting in jail everybody knows he has access to phones he's watching he's talking he basically stalked mudewala and you'd keep seeing this reels this song was actually very famous literally called the shots and had him assassinated and also claimed credit for it yes. which goldie bra did then from canada yes right and all of the indian efforts to get these people extradited have come to naught right because from what i understand from nia people is that canadians tell them that you have evidence but mm. this does not does not pass the test of Canadian yes. Canadian standards. Yes. Right. Finally, uh, with me, the Baba Siddiqui assassination, which you've been covering from here, and also Mansi Fadke and Purva Chitnis in Mumbai. What exactly happened there, and why? So the police so far have arrested four people: Pravin Longkar um, from Maharashtra, uh, Pune in Maharashtra. There is Gurmail Singh. Uh, who hails from Kethal district in Haryana? Then there are three other people. Kethal is not far from Punjab, so these are mixed populations. Yeah. Um, there is Dharamraj Kashyap, just 19 years old. He is from Bahrech uh, in Uttar Pradesh. Then there is another absconding shooter who allegedly, you know, fired the shots first and fatally um, shot at uh, Siddiqui. And then the fourth person who was arrested today is Harish Kumar. who is also from bahraj in uttar pradesh but these are all hired guns yes these are all sharp shooters but among all of these people uh, at the center of this murder is this district bahraj in up because three people so far are from there then there is a scrap dealing shop in pune where all of these meetings and dealings took place now um, these are all young men young recruits um not all of them have cases or not all the suspects have cases um it is except one Gur- gurmail singh has a murder case yes i think he f- killed a relative uh, killed, killed his own cousin or his own cousin with an ice pick yes yes right? he stabbed him 52 uh, times uh, yeah 52 times and he got bail and he is now doing this on bail right um so the important key um player in this particular murder so far mumbai police sources have told us are the longkar brothers Uh, now Pravin Longkar is in custody of the Mumbai police till 21st of October. His brother Shubham Longkar, in whose name the purported post claiming responsibility of the Bishnoi gang in the murder of Baba Siddiqui was put up, is absconding. This, how 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 did they make the claim on behalf of Bishnoi gang? Uh, Shubham, they use hashtags. So hashtag what? Hashtag Lawrence Bishnoi gang. Hashtag uh, Lawrence Bishnoi. Hashtag Goldie Brar. Hashtag Shubham Longkar. They also right. put in their right. their own names. Now the Longkars also have one case. It's an arms case from January. They were granted bail a couple of months later, and they were supposed to follow the SOP to go to the local police station in a court, this uh, a court subdivision of Maharashtra. But they had disappeared from 13th June. In fact, Shubham Longkar was also questioned. in regards to this uh, firing case outside salman salman khan's house in bandra yeah. and salman khan's see first of all i think bishnoi says because i am a bishnoi and black buck is sacred for us yes but more than that do you think it's it's more for either extortion or for fame hunting that he's been targeting it, salman it's, khan it bishnoi was 5 years old in 1998 yeah i know uh, yes i know so right now to claim that huh. is fame hunting or is it for extortion i think because it is because baba siddiqui was salman khan's friend i think it is for dominance and for fame hunting and also to establish dominance in maharashtra bishnoi gang this entire alliance and the rival alliance was only known in up haryana punjab and rajasthan But because bombay is mumbai is where mumbai. money and glamour yes are. and also the western belt if you rule in delhi and in bombay then you are almost ruling all over india yeah. that's so what he, they... so he wants to be the prime mafioso of india right the godfather of india finally once again the question we talked about earlier but why sabarmati jail i think you said that police wanted him to be in a very high security place is it that high security in particular and if so how could he still be carrying out allegedly baba siddiqui hit bishnoi has been in jail since 2014 he year, made 10 years 10 years that's correct a decade he has only made one attempt to escape, escape jail he did 
in January 2015, he was arrested again in March 2015. It is hardly two months out. Bishnoi runs his entire operation from inside jail. Um, sources across police and central agencies have told us that he plays on two things. Threat, threatening the jailers and the jail staff and also the caste card. Protection money and caste. These are two ways and there, there are uh, jail officials are compliant in facilitating all so of these is, things. Is, is there an order, a court order that sent him to Sabarmati and that said he can't be moved out of Sab Sabarmati? There Mugrat? is a court, there is an order by the Ministry of Home Affairs under 268.1 of the C, of the then CRPC which allows the central government to prohibit the movement of high security prisoners from one state to another. Now this was passed last year. It was supposed to get over in this year August but it has been extended. He is in Sabarmati prison because all the police in Punjab, Haryana and Delhi did not want to keep him here. So there is a case with the Gujarat ATS accusing Bishnoi in a uh, drug smuggling case in a 36 kg narcotics case. So the uh, Gujarat police was taking his remand and then bringing him back to Delhi. At one point all of these police forces, uh, state police said he, he needs to be moved out of this belt into a different high security prison. And also there were lots of murders taking place in Tihar and in Mandoli jails. Yeah. That's fascinating Bismi and you know just, just I know all of us remember that but Sabarmati is also a name that is so closely associated with Mahatma Gandhi and his ashram and now you have you have this character sitting there and he's now got this international fame or infamy you can call it what you want depending on where you are coming from but i'm sure he's quite enjoying it he's loving it he loves his time in jail yeah because 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 no gangster loves anything more than bad publicity <laughs>